Hello and welcome to another Game Under Development video. This time I'm working on a ZX Spectrum game with the provisional title Flood. It's a horizontal scroller with lots of aliens zipping about and people to rescue. Let's take a look, shall we? Okay, this is uh, about four or five days work I've done on this so far. A game with a provisional title of Flood. Um, the premise is that aliens have uh, melted the polar ice caps in order to force um, the land to flood and everybody's um, on the rooftops now where the aliens can abduct them. So the idea is that the player flies around in this helicopter and has to rescue all the little people. So as you can see it scrolls um, it's a variety of different speeds. It's quite flexible. People appear on the rooftops, as you can see there, all these different buildings. You can see the um, barbershop there, the, the pub, um, the cafe. Uh, now I've picked one up, as you can see. It says passenger on board now. So now I fly over back to the ship. And the idea is just to deposit him on the ship. And there you can see little man waves at me to say thank you. And then he wanders off. So he's been rescued. So, points for picking them up. I might actually put some code in to um, make sure that you can only pick the people up when you're going slowly or, or you're stationary or something like that. I think I don't think it's realistic to be picking them up at that speed. But uh, as I say, this is only four or five days of coding. So, um, you know, there's, there's lots of stuff to go in now. So, um, my next task, I think, is going to be writing the code for some aliens. So I've got to just play them on the screen and make them move around and abduct little people and I've got some ideas about how I want to uh, do that as you can see we're just scrolling around at any speed we, we like there you can drop the people into the ship from a great height but um, it, it's not recommended it'll kill them you can also drop them into the ocean if you're um, a bit of a sadist um, just just as you can in uh, escape from crack Krakatoa um, this is kind of, um, it's a bit like Choplifter, it's a bit like Escape from Krakatoa, and there's a bit of Defender in here, really. Um, it's going to be all things. So just something I haven't seen done in this way before on the Spectrum, I thought I'd give it a go. Um, see how many more days it takes me to, to get this finished. I don't have a lot of memory left to play with, actually. Um, I've been very, very wasteful with, with the memory on this, just to get the speed up and the scrolling working. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly how I did it, but um, it, that's that's a trade secret. But um, yes, it's extremely wasteful. Um, but it was just an effect I wanted to create, of getting the scrolling working the way I've done it. So yes, small play area as well, not, not huge, but um, I think it shouldn't uh, be uh, too big anyway. If I'm going to have you know a limited number of um, enemy sprites bouncing around the screen then. Um, I don't want to have a huge play area because they'll be um, they'll be sparsely populated. So lots of enemies flying around, zipping around and, and getting in the player's way. Uh, I haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to give the player a weapon that he can use when he's not carrying a passenger. I'll, um, I'll have to have a think about that. But in the meantime, I've got some code to write for some aliens. So I think that's what I'm going to do next okay so here's a sprite I've drawn for the saucer I'm not entirely satisfied with it um, I've got a 16 by 16 sprite and I want a flying saucer so um, it doesn't have to be 16 pixels high well this is um seven up the sprite tool I uh, use for all my games. It's written by a chap going by the name of Jaime Tejedor Gomez, better known as Metal Brain. I hope I haven't butchered the pronunciation of that. Um, and it's a very, very useful tool for drawing spectrum graphics, uh, particularly in game graphics. Um, as I say, I'm not happy with it as it stands. What I'm going to do is create a new sprite and we're going to make it 24 pixels wide 
by 8 high. And then we're going to copy the old sprite, Control V, oops, into there. Now, because of the way I'm pre-shifting everything, uh, I've got to have eight different pre-shifted positions for this to draw it on the screen, which means I've got an extra pixel I can stick on the end, so you can actually have 17 pixels. When you're pre-shifting a sprite like this, when you're using uh, three bytes, and I don't think that's big enough to be abducting the little people. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that that works. So that's my sprite. So if I control C that and then I just create seven new frames. And then it's a case of control C to copy it, control V to paste. And I paste it in at each of the pre-shifted positions. And there you go. Eight pre-shifted positions for that sprite. Uh, and I think I'm going to save that as just source. So, this is a very useful tool <coughs> because we can export the data either as a binary, as assembly source, or C source. I generally export it as C source, even though I'm coding an assembler. It's just um, easier for me to uh, handle the, uh, the data in that uh, format. So I'll have to get that into the code now and copied and pasted into death B lines in the code. So with the code copied and pasted into my source file, the next job is to start thinking about a table for our UFOs. Now this is the men table of all the little men and they each little man has 10 bytes, little bits of information that um, tell me exactly what the man is doing at any one time, whether he's in the helicopter or whether he's being abducted, whether he's in a building waiting to come out onto the roof, whether he's standing on the building and waving or whether he's walking off or whether he's dead um, and then obviously lots of other bits of information like well the old status the new status the old x the new x um, we have to store all of this information because of the way i'm drawing the graphics on the screen I'm, I'm using the line scan method which means i'm deleting the old sprite and redrawing the new sprite at the same time uh, in order to avoid flickery graphics and tearing which, um, yes, can make a, a game look very unprofessional. So the line scan or the byte scan method is the way to go with, but that means we have to hold two pieces of information um, at any one time whenever we're, we're drawing and deleting the sprite. So we have to know what the old sprite looked like and also know what the new sprite looks like. With that in mind, we now need to create an alien table. Um, let's call it should we call it UFO tab or UAP is the new name, isn't it? Unidentified aerial phenomena or something? I don't know. We'll call it UFO tab. Right. We have to decide on the structure. So, um, so IX plus zero will be this, the um, old status. One will be the new status, in case it changes, then we have to remove a UFO from the game, from the screen entirely. Then we need two will be our old X. This is the vertical 
coordinates. I always call it X because it's the number of lines down from the top of the screen. It's I, I've always called it X. I know it's the wrong way around. Anyone who's seen the source code to any of my games will know that I've always done it that way. Right, the Y coordinate, the horizontal coordinate, is 16 bits. So for old Y, so 6 will be the new Y. Mm. We only have one frame of animation. So we don't need to hold the any image information other than the coordinates present. So we've got old status, new status. Ah, now we're going to need a pointer to the man we're abducting, if we're abducting someone. Um, so that'll be two bytes. It'll be useful to know which man we're going to abduct. Then, what other information am I going to need? Maybe, 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 maybe. Yeah, we're going to have to have another secondary status. For example, a counter. So that we know how long we're going to stay in each state. Um, that's usually a good thing to have. And then IX plus 11. Do we need an IX plus 11? Oh, yes. Right. Might be a good idea to have a target X. And a target Y. The Y will be two bytes. So that'll be 12 and 13. Which means we've got 14 pieces of information for the UFO. I think that'll do us. For the time being, see how we go with eight aliens on screen. OK, folks, so I've got some sprite code to write and that's going to take me a while. So I guess we'd better leave it there for this video. And hopefully I'll see you again in the next video. Guys, like, comment, share or subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I also have a Patreon account for those who want to support new Spectrum and ZX81 software development.